ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the swiss knife and today we're going to go to the hardwood as we have a basketball edition of the swiss knife and today i'll look at three takeaways that i have from the spurs warriors game in san antonio so let's get right into it the first takeaway that i have is that the warriors lineup of death can be solved relatively that is the warriors lineup of death usually features Andre Iguodala at the three spot, but uh, he's been hurt. But they kept the lineup the same as they relatively switched out the, uh, the three spot, but they kept Harrison Barnes and Tremont Green at the four and five. What the Spurs did is, quite frankly, something that teams should have been doing a, a long time ago, and the Spurs stayed big. They didn't try to downsize and match up with the Warriors. Like, they didn't try to put Kawhi Leonard at the four or anything. They stayed big with Boris Diaw and Marcus Aldridge. And they they put Boris Diaw on the block. And they made Harrison Barnes defend a much bigger, uh, taller player. And... This is something that a lot of teams should have been doing because Harrison Barnes just couldn't handle Boris Diaw on the block as while Boris Diaw isn't the best of players, he's one of the more savvy players in the entire league. And he used the size to his advantage, much like Marcus Aldridge did and much like the entire Spurs team did because they uh, out-rebounded the Warriors by 16 rebounds and Late in that game, in, in critical moments, it, the Spurs just kept getting rebound after rebound after rebound, and it was nothing that the Warriors could do because they were so undersized. Now, looking at the defensive side of things for the Spurs, they held the Warriors to a season low 79 points, and I mean, let's face it, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson did go 2 of 19 from the three point line, and you're not gonna see that at all pretty much in the playoffs but I will give uh, the Spurs some credit here we got to give the Spurs you know some some credit because every time Steph Curry came off of one of those screens there was somebody there in his face as soon as he came off those screens they were at the three-point line they were meeting them at the three-point line and this is the first time I actually seen a team pick up Steph Curry at half court and uh, I know that makes uh, Oscar Robertson proud but uh, but uh, I mean I seen Danny Green picking up Steph Curry at half court that was, that was pretty surprising also with the Warriors I like to say that you're not gonna really stop them you just have to choose what you're going to give up and stick with it and that's what the Spurs did last night. They had it on their minds that they weren't gonna let Clay and uh, Steph Curry kill them from the three-point line. So they they were closing out hard on those screens, and oh, they were overplaying them, and they were pretty much allowing them to get into the lane. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess they figured that you know we'll live with you getting in the lane. Because the worst you'll do is get two points as opposed to getting three and with this team you kind of got to have to take that approach and it seems to work out for the most part moving on my next takeaway is that these teams second unit is better than most teams starting lineups I mean these guys come off the bench uh, Sean Livingston uh, Barbosa and uh, they didn't even have Iguodala that game, as I mentioned earlier. But uh, McAdoo and you know, look on the other side, there's Patrick Mills and Ginobili. And these guys are going after it like it's game seven. And I mean, it, the, the, the level of play never dropped off when both teams start lineup went out of the game. And it, it was amazing to watch because it was a highly played game when the second units came in. And speaking of the second units, it was quite the surprise to see uh, Tim Duncan coming off the bench. I mean, I was shocked. 
uh, I guess Popovich uh, assumed that out of the two that Boris Diaw was the more athletic uh, over Tim Duncan I, I could see why he would do that but looking at the game outside of that outside of those eight minutes that Duncan got in I mean he was just in there for that little bit and for the rest of the game he was pretty much a cheerleader for the Spurs and if we get the Warriors in Spurs in the playoffs like I think we will uh, it's going to be strange and I'd, I'd hate to see it but if, if, if Duncan doesn't get in in the game in important moments while the Spurs are chasing the title against the, the Warriors that would, that would be quite disappointing to see but moving on my last takeaway is that this one is going to go seven games if we get this series in the Western Conference Finals I mean uh, from top to bottom you look at the teams you have two MVP candidates in Steph Curry and Kawhi Leonard you have two supremely talented second units and you look at the supporting cast of the starting lineups for each team you have Clay Thompson and Draymond Green all-star uh, choices from this year and on the other side Marcus Aldridge, Tony Parker. I mean, it's it's star. It's going to be a star-studded series, and it's going to be amazing to watch. I mean, I've seen some great uh, playoffs from playoff series. Excuse, excuse me, from the past, and this one has the chance to rank up there with the greatest of them all, if we get it. And uh, if we do, I, I see it going seven and. If it's in Oracle, I wouldn't bet against the Warriors. This one is, will, would be great, and it would be the unofficial NBA Finals, in my opinion. We've come to the end once again, and I'd like to say that you should feel free to comment on and like this video, and also subscribe to this channel if you are a fan of basketball, much like I am. I like to dab into a lot of subjects, but with the playoffs picking up, and March Madness going on right now. I'm going to be talking about basketball a lot more. So feel free to subscribe to see every video. And also you can follow me on Twitter at SwissKnife87.